A lot of you know me as the guy who came up on YouTube making videos about emo rap, as I did resonate with that style of music just a couple of years ago. Then in early 2019, I made a video called Emo Rap is Dead, which wasn't about the genre dying at all. It was more so just how I wasn't really too fond of the name emo rap. At the end of the day, emo rap is considered a trend. And I don't know if you guys are totally aware of this, but people see it as something that's going to fall off. And since I've made that video, I've constantly been reflecting on how I felt about that video and how I felt about those statements and also just how has the genre sort of evolved and changed since then. But I didn't say that the genre was dead, just, just in the in the title because clickbait, but I, I don't think the genre is dead and I don't think the style of music is dead. In fact, I actually think it's still growing and it's gonna continue to grow. I think the real problem lies in how we categorize emo rap because there's a bunch of different artists that make emotional music and just calling them all emo rap is definitely not it. My name is Patrick CC and this is where I think emo rap is going in 2020 and beyond. Grab a glass of water, stay hydrated, and put your thinking cap on. As kind of a general statement, I think emotional music is going to be more and more apparent in the mainstream in the next five to ten years. But like I said, emo rap is hard to define because emo is just short for emotional, which defines a lot of popular rap music today. Artists like Trippy Red, Juice World, Peep and X, R.I.P., Lil Uzi Vert, uh, YNW Melly, Lil TJ, all of these rappers and many others are making emotional music. And you know what? For those artists that I mentioned, emo rap is honestly kind of a decent categorization because it really is just emotional rap music. And obviously not all of their music, but just a lot of it. But a lot of other people associate the word emo with the subculture of emo, goth, and alternative. Some people hear the word emo and think of this, and other people hear the word emo and just think of this. And this goes the same for music. Some people think emo rap and hear this. And others hear emo rap and think this. And it's pretty obvious that those two songs are not really the same at all. And if you put them on the same show together, the audience probably wouldn't appreciate them the same, or they might appreciate one way more than the other. But the general term of emo rap would kind of say that they make the same type of music. Popular emo artist Fatsy actually summarized this debate pretty well with this tweet. Emo is a genre of music, not just a way of writing lyrics or singing. The way I play guitar is directly influenced by emo and pop punk bands. The way I structure and compose my music is influenced by it too. Emo is not just singing about sad stuff. Fatsy and other various artists in this space are facing the emo rap categorization, which is unfair because they're really not rappers at all. The only thing that is rap about their music is the fact that they use trap drums and 808s. And sure, they have moments in their music where they're rapping or flowing like a rapper, but that's only natural because it's a rap beat. But the culture that they represent, their branding, and their style of writing lyrics is more so a representation of the emo subculture rather than the traditional hip hop subculture. So what do we call it and where do we go from here? Well, I'm just one guy with a small following, so I doubt that this video or really I have the potential to make a giant paradigm shift in the way that people categorize this type of music or these types of music. Most people are just gonna label it emo rap, call it a day. And like I said, for the mainstream guys, I think it's a decent categorization. But for the upcoming emo artists in this scene, like Batsy, 93 Feet of Smoke, Gucci Highwaters, Garden, Shinigami, Convolk, etc. I'm not really sure how to categorize the music. People have said alternative rap, people have said emo with 808s, people have said alternative 808s, and I'm sure most people wouldn't want to have a genre at all. They're just like, oh, just call it music or 
whatever, but it's important to have genres. I understand that genres are very limiting and I have spoken out about genres before and said that they do limit an artist and they do kind of put them in a box and I for sure feel that way, but they are relatively important. I mean, think if you have like a giant photo album on your computer and you have 10,000 photos, but they have no dates, they have no context, no categorization, no labels, no nothing. You just have 10,000 photos and it's like, those are my photos. What about that time you went on vacation? Or what about photos with your mom or photos with this person or that person or whatever? You have some sort of way of finding those photos and categorizing them and putting them in folders so that you could reference them or go back to them or whatever. But if you just have 10,000 photos in a folder, it's just a bunch of stuff and sometimes you want to go to a specific type of photo or a selfie or whatever. Kind of a weak example, but it's, you know, the same with music. If you told me, oh, I like emo rap and then I turn on some Gucci Highwaters. <laughs> might be like, what is this? Like, I, I want to hear a little TJ. Totally different, but you could kind of say that they're very similar. And I've wanted to promote both types of these artists. The emo rappers mixed with traditional rappers mixed with the alternative emo guys, but putting them all into a categorization of just rap has been sort of mixed responses from people because I'll get comments like, oh, this is great. Bunch of different music in here. It's pretty versatile. I like it. And then I've had people be like, this is just a bunch of sad kids, like rap being overly depressed for no reason. Where's the fun music? Where's the hype music? Or where's the lyricism? So just to call it rap is just a little bit too vague as well. So it really has seemed like no matter what I try to categorize, it just doesn't really end up working all that well. And at the same time, it doesn't get a good enough reach because rap is too vague. And if I say, oh, here's 20 rap songs, I don't know, it's just not that clickable. But then if I say, here's 20 emo rap songs, and I put an artist like Jelani Imani in there, people might be like, that's not, that's not emo rap. Like, I want Lil Lotus. You could see where the big problem occurs with trying to promote artists or show people new artists without a clear defining genre. I think that in 2020 and beyond, emo music will continue to grow and continue to be more apparent, but in both of these kind of separate directions. I think that the emo rappers that exist in the mainstream, there will continue to be more of those. I think Juice World and X and Peep and their inspirations will continue to be pushed down onto newer artists. Unfortunately, we will see a lot more clone-ish artists, but then we'll also see some people who just took a few pieces of their legacy and kind of transformed it into their own. And we'll see a lot more original artists coming up. But then the alternative emo 808s guys, I think that they will grow a little bit slower, but for sure much bigger, but not to a mainstream rap fan base. So they're gonna blow up, so to speak, because their music is undeniably good and they have really good fan bases, but I don't think that they're gonna be playing at Rolling Loud, is what I'm saying. So I do think they could be playing festivals at like Warp Tour or Firefly or Bonnaroo, kind of more alternative leaning crowds rather than more rap leaning crowds. I hope that makes sense. I hope I've been kind of making sense with the separation of the two genres and how I've constantly been debating whether I should, how I should promote it all or if I shouldn't or how to categorize it or whatever. I've just constantly been thinking about it and I still don't know what the right way is. And I apologize that I don't have a clear cut answer to this problem. I think that there does need to be some sort of generalized separation between emo rappers and alternative emo artists that use rap beats <laughs> because when when you listen to the music, it's very clear that they're not the same, but when you're just talking about it and you're just trying to promote it or whatever, it just seems like they don't fit together. And it is relatively important because like, these guys are getting popular and you know, it's a it's a totally new sound if you ask me. So I'd love to know what you guys think of the categorization of the two genres and where you think it's going, what's gonna happen, how these artists should deal with it, or if we should just be like, forget it. Just call it emo rap and just let the uh, music speak for itself. I don't really know what the right answer is, but I'm thinking two separate genres is probably leaning towards the right thing to do. But I don't know. I'm really interested to see what you guys think. My name is Patrick CC. It's been a while since I talked about emo rap and kind of my thoughts on it. And, uh, and yeah, it feels 
pretty good because uh, really proud of the the accomplishments that all of these guys have made and like how they're legitimately starting a new wave. No honk during my outro. Anyways, my name is Patrick CC. I'm out.